Okay, this is going to be a video about my helmet collection. Uh, as you can see, it is now, let's see, how many is that? 11? 11 in total. Uh, so we're going to start off, I've arranged them in rows according to the time period, and we're going to start off with the Second World War. So, the earliest helmet I have is this 1917 A1 transitional helmet. Uh, yeah, so the first thing you're going to notice here is that the liner is kind of falling off there. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I got this one off eBay and description wasn't too good. But the interesting thing about this one is that the transitional helmets uh, were made usually with reused shells from the First World War. So this shell, according to my research, was used uh, during the First World War. And then they inserted a new liner into it. And as you can see, uh, this is definitely an interwar edition. Um, it's in decent shape otherwise. Uh, there's some writing in there. Uh, can't show it with the camera, but I, uh, I personally think that it's not, uh, not authentic writing, but eh, whatever. Uh, moving on, um, I have a few M1 helmets uh, from the Second World War period. This particular one is a rear seam, uh, right there, um, uh, swivel bale, it's got the sewn-on chin straps, OD3. Uh, that's original to the Second World War. And on the inside, however, it's got a Korean War liner and a 1980-something headband. Uh, so, oh, and then in the front, you can see it's kind of broken off. But overall, it's a cool helmet. Plus, it's been named on the inside of the shell. Um, I'm not going to take it out because it's too much work. And it's also named on the uh, liner itself. Uh, moving on, I have another M1 helmet here. Uh, this is the one that I uh, kind of fixed up myself. I uh, put new chin straps on it, a uh, new uh, liner, um, what, you, what do you call that? Liner chin strap. Uh, there's a new headband in there. Um, but originally, the stuff that's original to the helmet, it's a Second World War front seam, swivel bale, and the liner inside is a uh, Korean War, but uh, this one's better than the other one, so. Yeah, I, uh, I prefer to wear this one um, just because it's, I don't know, looks more authentic. Um, next up, we have a M40 German Stahlhelm. Uh, this one is actually uh, in relic condition. I got it from an uh, antique store in Austria. Um, and yeah, the problem is is that it didn't have a liner, so I had to put a, a new liner in there, but that's okay because, uh, you know, I don't want to really wear out a original liner because I, I like to wear my helmet, so wearing an original liner is a no-no, especially in this case where the stall helms can cost hundreds of dollars. But overall, it's in decent condition. Uh, the decal there, um, I was told it was a Waffen SS, but... Yeah, you know, I, I don't really believe a lot about that guy, um, but it is an authentic helmet. I do know that. Uh, next to it, um, that is a uh, Luftschutz helmet, and if you know German military history, the Luftschutz was pretty much like a, a civil defense kind of organization, and these helmets... Uh, not exactly rare, but they're kind of interesting looking. Uh, this particular one, you I don't think you can see the writing there, but it's made in uh, Vienna, and uh, it was, I guess, assigned to a, uh, a chocolate factory um, that's no longer there, but yeah, that's kind of cool information. Stamp right there. Uh, the decal itself, uh, you probably noticed the really weird looking paint job. That's uh, because someone actually painted it over in the post-war period. Uh, but with this really gloppy black paint, so I took off that paint as best I could and um, Now you can finally see the decal that was underneath um, So yeah, unfortunately it doesn't look that great, but I'll keep working on it uh, So that does it for the Second World War era So moving on into the post-war era we have a 1949 uh, Belgian uh, Brody helmet Let's see if I can get this uh, uh, this particular one, uh, decent decent shape, I would say. Um, the interesting thing about this is that I thought it was a, uh, a Doughboy helmet 
uh, similar to that one right there, but I actually didn't see the uh, the Belgian sticker right there. Kind of a overlook on my point, but uh, this one is dated 1949, so it's after the Second World War, but it's similar to the British model, so uh, it's definitely kind of a cool representative of that derivative of uh, helmet lines. Uh, next to it, we have a uh, something that looks like an M1 helmet, but it's not an M1 helmet. It's actually a French M51 helmet. This particular one is dated 1953. Uh, these helmets were used, from what I know, they were used in the Algerian War, the French Indochina near the very end, and uh, apparently some of them were meant for Korea, but they never actually went, and I think this is where this particular helmet came from. Because as you can see, it's in really, really good condition. Uh, when I got it, it was still in the cardboard wrapping paper. So I figured that this helmet was never actually used, but it was just kept in storage. So it's a really nice helmet. Um, I think the liner is dated 54, though. But the, the shell is 53, which is like the last year of the French Indochinese War. Uh, next to it, we have another M51, but this one belonged to the Gendarme, the police. And uh, as you can see, it's dark blue. Uh, the liner itself, this one was um, uh, high pressure, uh, high pressure uh, cotton duck, I think. And this one is actually plastic. Uh, it's actually, it's a later year. I believe it's the 19, yeah, 1966, uh, so Vietnam War era. Um, and there was supposed to be a crest in the front of that helmet. I don't know if you see that hole right there. There's supposed to be a golden crest in the in the front of that helmet, but uh, unfortunately, eh, I could not find it. So yeah, that's embarrassing. Um, then we have a helmet right next to it, and you probably all recognize this one. This is a Vietnam M1 helmet uh, with the Mitchell cover, dated 1969. And on the inside, if you take a look, it has an actual uh, airborne liner inside of it. I don't think that's original. It's probably put together, but that's okay. Um, the helmet itself is actually in really nice condition. Can't take off the cover now, but it has some um, some nice finish on it. Uh, the sweatband here is dated somewhere in the 1960s. Can't make out the second digit though. Um, but overall in really, you know, pretty good condition. Yeah. Uh, interesting fact about these airborne liners. Uh, these were the one of the first ones that were made in uh, uh, nylon which was supposed to be more uh, resistant to like bullets and other fragments than the cotton duck ones of the Second World War and Korea. So that's the Vietnam helmet. Uh, and then moving on, I also have some rather uh, more modern helmets, I would say. Uh, this particular one, it's kind of a strange looking design. This is a M71 Swiss helmet. Uh, it never actually saw, uh, I guess, theater combat, but it was used um, during the 1970s by the Swiss. And as you can see, it's got an interesting design. The liner is pretty simple looking, but if you take a look at the chin strap, it's got a quick release tab right here. So you could, um, you could just eject this uh, other part of the chin strap and just wear the helmet with just the two tabs. I don't know why it's there. Some people have hypothesized that it was because it was a paratrooper helmet, but since all the M71s have that kind of feature, I really doubt that's the case. But overall, it's in nice condition. I mean, it wasn't that expensive, so I'm not going to argue. And then finally, I have a uh, American Pazgit helmet. Uh, this one is a helmet that was worn uh, 1980s, 1990s, into the 2000s. Uh, I believe it's still being worn by reserve units as well today. Uh, the, yeah, the cover I have on it is a Woodland cover. Uh, that was popular during the 1980s, but uh, you'll also see them with the, um, the more modern, uh, what's it called, um, universal camo pattern also with uh, Desert Storm kind of uh, tannish covers. But this particular one, um, I don't know when it was manufactured, but I'm guessing it was, uh, it, it wasn't too recent because it doesn't have the comfort pad, which was installed in a lot of the newer Pazgets. Uh, in addition, it's also got the really old chin strap, so yeah, that's, that's my guess. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to, 
give a, ni a nice um, overview of my helmet collection. Uh, I've pretty much gathered every single helmet that I've wanted to gather and it took me uh, maybe three years to do so or so. Um, but I'm really happy with the results. Um, the only helmet that's missing that I would like to get is an actual complete stall helm, but uh, those things are pretty expensive, so maybe I'll just uh, do that another day. Um, but I guess that's it for now. Uh, thank you for watching.